Okay, everyone, I guess it's okay to uh, now for our politicians to really kind of maybe sort of go on out and criticizing Biden and Israel and uh, the horrific attacks that's happening in Rafa. That's right, folks, because Netanyahu has admitted that he made such a tragic mistake. He made an oopsie. Oh, no, we shouldn't have targeted that refugee camp. But too late, too, too little too late, you know, because, you know, the old saying, curiosity killed the cat and then satisfaction brought it back. No, that's not it. The dead remain dead. OK, and unfortunately, folks, the crisis is still ongoing. But our Democratic politicians, our lovely, oh, so fantastic Democratic politicians. Are now coming all on out of the woodwork saying, oh, we condemn Biden and Netanyahu, all of them are speaking out. They're condemning what's happening, Rafa. Now, will any of them do anything? Hey, before I play this video of Rashida Tlaib addressing the People's Conference from Palestine, let's have democracy in the chat. Type one for Kit. God damn it, you awful man. Our democratic politicians are working hard. They're just keeping their powder dry for the right moment. And this time, you're going to see that they're going to be ready. Type two, man, they ain't going to do anything. It's just words. It's words to maybe bring satisfaction to the remnants of the vote blue, no matter who, progressive coalition. Because I can assure you, folks, a DNC convention should be very interesting to cover, especially when it comes here in Chicago between August 19th through the 22nd. So let's go ahead and bring up this video here of Rashid Tlaib addressing the People's Conference of Palestine. So let's go and play this video. Y'all welcome. Welcome to the most beautiful, blackest city in the country, the city of Detroit. I don't know if I need to remind you all, but Detroit, we birth movements, not just labor movements. We birth movements on environmental justice, on women's rights, and so much more. So welcome. Gain strength from this amazing, beautiful black city that raised me. I don't need to tell you that you're on the right side. I don't need to. But I'll be damned if I wait 10 years before they apologize to all of you for doing what was right at this moment. Each year, our country, and I say our country because it is our country, sends billions of dollars to maintain an apartheid government and support the ongoing ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. It is disgraceful that the Biden administration and my colleagues in Congress continue to smear them for protesting to save lives, no matter faith or ethnicity. It is cowardly. But we're not going to forget in November, are we? The International Court of Justice just ruled that the Israeli government must stop its invasion of Rafah. But President Biden says what's happening in Gaza is not a genocide. Where's your red line, President Biden? You well, if there was a red line, it would have been the squad, in theory, the Congressional Progressive Caucus. The people who said they were going to hold Biden's feet to the fire. Now, look, I try and keep my pausing to a minimum here. I'm trying to be better about that. But let's be very clear here about what we expected from the Justice Democrats, or in theory, what all of us assumed that the Justice Democrats, brand new Congress, our revolution, DSA endorsed candidates who soon became elected lawmakers, what we expected them to do. We expected them kind of sort of in theory to raise the ruckus. Now, to be clear here, We've seen the Tea Party Republicans and, yes, the Freedom Caucus enact policies that they want. Now, this is an endorsement of it, but they at least act like a unified movement. But as for the congressional progressive lawmakers, we haven't seen anything. We saw them compromise, appease the Democratic establishment. But see, the thing is, if the establishment was truly that powerful, all you had to do was stamp your feet and your legions of supporters would be there. People needed something to rally around and 2016 was that lightning in the bottle the bernie sanders movement i don't think ever again will we ever see such a united coalition that was just as eager and ready to implement our power than ever before and unfortunately unfortunately the democrats and our congressional progressive lawmakers bernie sanders threw it away you were that red line to the neoliberal democrats and if need be People would have rallied to support all of you if you turned yourselves into a strong voting bloc to challenge the establishment. But no, no, Trump derangement syndrome got the better of them. Well, every single bullet, every single gun, every single weapon, bombs that we send is a sacrifice of our own schools here at home. 
many of which, when I go into the schools, have garbage bags over their drinking fountains because they don't have clean water. President Biden, I hope you hear us loud and clear. Attacking the authority of the International Criminal Court and interfering in the legal process is nothing more, nothing more than an attempt to prevent the genocidal maniac Netanyahu and his senior Israeli officials from being held accountable for those crimes against humanity. You are an enabler, President Biden. But wait, wait, you know when my colleagues are outraged? They're outraged over the protest. On wait, are you talking about the squad, AOC? Because when AOC was confronted by law, uh, by uh, uh, activists and protesters, she got a little bit angry. She said that Jose Vega was being very rude in 2022. And not to mention, you know, when other, uh, you know, protesters went to, to interrupt her movie night, she said it was effed up, man. It was effed up. But you guys had plenty of time to do those photo ops at those uh, university campuses, though. College campuses in our country. They're more outraged than that than the atrocities happening right now on the ground in Palestine, the war crimes. Y'all, there's no universities in Gaza. We all know this. We say it over and over again. And now, and now, if they get their way, they're going to silence the universities here at home. So now all of them are speaking out. Here's another tweet. Now, look, these are tweets I agree with, okay? It's just squad members. You had an opportunity. I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to be too mean, you know, trying not to be way too cynical here, but it's just, look, I'm politically homeless. I remember having this conversation with uh, Pasta on yesterday's show and even on Friday's show. Hell, I've even shared this conversation with other people as well. I am politically homeless because of the failures of the Democratic Party and more importantly, because of the failures of the quote unquote squad and other progressive lawmakers, because they turn out to be nothing but neoliberal hack frauds, including Bernie Sanders himself. The whole world is taking action to stop the genocide of Palestinians, including the International Court of Justice. Where is President Biden's red line? You are the red line. Or, hey, wait, 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 wait. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know what? There is a red line. There is a red line. I want to read this out from Salty Digital Dive. Uh, the red line is Biden's pants where his hemorrhoid flared when he shites his pants. <laughs> I made that with my noise, <laughs> which was one off noise. <laughs> English is not my first language. Anyways, anyways, give it up for AOC. AOC. Here's AOC. The IDF's attack on a tent camp of innocents in Rafa is indefensible atrocity. This was done in open defiance of the president of the United States. That's Joe Biden, the one who's exceeding expectations. Remember, AOC, you said that exceeding expectations. Red line and the ICJ's call for a ceasefire. It's long past time for the president to live up to his words to suspend military aid. OK, well, what are you going to do about it? Now, hold on. Here's here. Here's here, folks. I'm not going to subject you guys too much to the squad because here's a little palate cleanser. No, she's not part of Congress, but you know what? I love what she wrote here. Give it up for Natori Lee. Another dumb biatch acting like she cares. I'm pretty sure Hakeem Jeffries, uh, Joe Biden, told her to run to Congress so they can pass another billion to send to Israel. She and AOC will be the first ones running to sign pass the bill for genocide. So what did Ayanna Presley write? And shout out again to Natori Lee, okay? So follow her on social media. She posted a lot of great stuff. Horrific and gut-wrenching images coming out of Rafah last night. How much longer will the U.S. stand by while the Israeli military slaughters and mutilates Palestinian babies? Where is our humanity? This has been going on for eight months. I I Ayana, have you been sleeping? I mean, it's okay if you've been sleeping, but, you know, this has been going on for a little bit. I mean, the dust toll as it stands is 35,000, but you know what? You know that number is going to be rising up. Men, women, children are starving. Journalists are getting popped. First, you know, uh, humanitarian workers getting popped. And never forget what happened to a World Central Kitchen Aid workers, you know. Three trucks with their logo, the WCK logo on it. Also talking to the IDF. Hey, we're going to point A to point B and point B to point A. And then they get struck. Not by Hamas or Hamas, but by the IDF. Here's another palate cleanser. 
These people stood and cheered Israel's war in the weeks after October 7th, even though Netanyahu and other Israelis were explicit about what they intended to do to Gaza. Now, when it's easy and it doesn't matter, they're trying to erase that support from their legacy and conscience. Give it up, everybody. A Warren. The Israeli bombing of a refugee camp inside the designated safe zone is horrific. Israel has a duty to protect innocent civilians and Palestinians seeking shelter in Rafah have nowhere safe to go. Netanyahu's assault in Rafah must stop. We need an immediate ceasefire because now it's okay. Never forget, never forget, Warren was also confronted by, hey, how come you're not calling for a ceasefire? Hey, how come you're not calling for a ceasefire, Warren? Warren! 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 What's going on, Warren? I want to pull up this article here from Common Dreams. All right. Uh oh. Look at this one. Here, here, here's here's where Netanyahu is saying Netanyahu under fire after calling Rafa massacre a tragic mistakes. Oh, it's an oopsie. That's all he did, you guys. It's an oopsie. People died. People die when they are killed, right? If you know what I referenced, I love you. Palestinian defenders on Monday blasted Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu for claiming the previous day's bombing of a refugee camp in Gaza that killed at least 50 people and injuring dozens more, many of them women and children, was a tragic mistake. Ah, guys. Ah, you know, I made this document, but I misspelled a couple of words. It's, it's a mistake. Just put a little bit of whiteout on it. Oh, no, we ordered a military strike and a whole bunch of people that are dead. Just put some flowers over it. It's just a mistake. It won't happen again. Never, ever, ever. Forever, never, right? The attack on the tent encampment in the Tal El Sultan neighborhood, uh, an Israeli designated safe zone, safe zone in the southern city of Rafa, ignited an inferno that burned people alive inside their tents. Oh my God, it's insanity, in which they were sheltering. Graphic images show charred and melted tents and bodies, including a small child whose head was missing. Israeli officials who habitually denied the IDF's massacres admitted to carrying out the strike, which they said killed two Hamas members. Really? Really? I mean, boy, oh boy, he turned 80 to 90 percent of Gaza into a moonscape. I mean, was all of Gaza just had Hamas like like it was like a Saturday morning cartoon, like with Wile E. Coyote, like <laughs> are you sure? All those 140 plus journalists. Were they, were they secretly Hamas, uh, Hamas, as Pierce Morgan would say? Were those World Central Kitchen Aid workers, were they, were they, were they Hamas? Because you guys said there was uh, somebody from Hamas there. Or were they delivering Hamas and you got to confuse Hamas and Hamas? I mean, which one was it? Which one was it? Which one was it, folks? I'll let you decide. Despite our, yeah, listen to this one. Despite our utmost efforts not to harm innocent civilians last night. There was a tragic mistake. We are investigating the incident and will obtain a conclusion because this is our policy. Yeah, I had a tent encampment. Innocent men, women, and children died, Netanyahu. His wag the dog moment. His wag the dog moment. Wag the dog moment. We should watch that for movie night. Uh, so shout out to Jay Tolbert, who tipped $4.99. Hollow words from these folks who, su who will support Biden any damn way. What clowns. Absolutely, Jay. You're right. And hey, folks. Hey, folks. Let's have another democracy in the chat. How do you think these oh-so-fantastic progressive lawmakers in the United States Senate and House, how do you think they're going to vote on election night? Should Biden be the nominee after the DNC convention here in Chicago? Type 3 for Kit Day are going to be resolute. And if need be, they're going to be strong and confident to not support Biden. They're going to do the right thing because they're good people, you awful man. Type 4-4. Four, four. Man, you know damn well they're going to vote for Biden. And they're going to tell all of us to vote for Biden because Donald Trump, woogie boogie boogie. I wonder how many fours we'll get in the chat. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Get you awful, awful man. So uh, going on, however, critics were quick uh, to refute the mistake narrative. This was intentional. You don't accidentally kill massive amounts of children and their families over and over again and get to say it was a mistake, said Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. She said on her social media posts. 
Let's go on to continue on. Progress, progressive U.S. lawmakers, human rights campaigners, and parties to South Africa's led uh, genocide case before the International Court of Justice are among those who flagged what they called statements of genocidal intent by the Israeli government and military officials. Netanyahu has likened uh, Palestinians to the uh, Amalekites, an ancient mythical foe of the Jews whom God of the he Hebrew Bible commanded the Israelis to exterminate. Well, reading religious texts and following an ancient belief and comparing it to a mythical foe. Say it with me, folks. What could possibly go wrong? It's it's like this is like the first time ever there's a, like a, a religious incident. I'm being sarcastic here, like a religious incident being taken out of context in the Middle East. I mean, never, ever, 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 ever has there been the history of mankind insane religious wars and conflict in the Middle East. I mean, that's never once not happened ever, period. It's 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 like we're doomed to stay there forever, and there's always going to be forever wars. <laughs> Say it with me, folks. What could possibly go wrong? What could go wrong? A lot can go wrong. So much can go wrong. Former Human, human Rights uh, Watch director uh, Kenneth Ross said, it stops being a tragic mistake when the Israeli government keeps killing large numbers of Palestinians, uh, Palestinian civilians. Yeah, you think? The problem is the rules of engagement that permit attacks with little regard for Palestinian civilians. Are they mere human animals? Dave Zurn, sports editor at The Nation, said on social media that it wasn't a tragic mistake. It was genocidal policy. Notice there's been a shift. Hey, Israel, the Israeli government, IDF, Netanyahu, you know, you kept on pushing and pushing. And just because right now TikTok could potentially be gone within a year, you think any you think people are just gonna be like, hold on, let me let me, let me just take this down here for a second. You think people are gonna be like, Oh yeah, I forgot all about what happened. You think people are gonna forget those images, those posts on social media? I think anybody who uses TikTok is gonna forget. Hey, US government, you think people are gonna forget that? That you're taking away a, a very popular social media platform? Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you think by censoring people and not posting things that people are going to forget. Now, look, everybody's seeing it. Everybody's talking about it. Israel. Your, your PR image has been ruined. When you got people like Pierce Morgan even saying like, well, this is just too far. Well, it's, it, it was too far from the beginning, folks. But hold on. I want to end this segment with at least something positive. UK newspapers were willing to run Israeli lies on 40 beheaded babies all over their front pages for free, but remain silent when it's Palestinian children. Because, listen, folks, we like to criticize American media. Look, there's a, there's a lot of things wrong with our media, but the whole world, there's a failure of media altogether because it's all corporate. Try not to punch the screen, folks. Try not to punch the screen. Um, Salma, many of the newspapers... Um, the Metro, The Times, The Telegraph, leading on these reports from Kafar Azar. We saw our correspondent Stuart Ramsey's report from there. Um, it, it seems to have come from one Israeli journalist who said that she was told by soldiers there that 40 babies had died and some of them had been beheaded. Yes. Truly horrifying. Um, we have not seen the evidence of that. We have asked uh, the Israeli Defense Forces, the IDF, three times to confirm those numbers. They have not yet. doesn't mean it didn't happen, but we saw a body bag with one child in it today when we were at Kafaza with this facility by the Israeli army. Yes, and I think it's important to recognize that emotions are very high at this point. And uh, you, you are looking at uh, women and children who have been murdered in this situation. That is undeniable. I think that there is an issue around the verification of this particular sentiment, which in itself is so horrifying. Um, it could, it, it, it forces the emotions. I think when I read this, you know, I, I assumed that it was true, that it wasn't uh, contended at all. Uh, and the, the horror that you feel when you think that this is potentially something that's happened is enormous. So it is very important important to have the verification of something like this. And if you look down um, on the metro here that you have up there, they've, they've put it in uh, quotation marks and they've talked about the Israeli claim of 40 babies having been beheaded. And if you look down some of the other papers, so the Telegraph, for example, they say that the Telegraph could not verify the claim. But it is important to say that we know that women and children have been killed. Uh, in they still got to lie. 
It's still got to twist and turn the truth. Everything. Yep. Driving me Macy. Absolutely. Well, while this is all going on, while this is all going on. And yes, I wanted to play that video in its full entirety because I'd be pausing it every second. It took a lot of power on me not to do that. But while I am surprised and yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit okay. I'm, I'm okay with these politicians finally speaking out. I mean, what better late than never, but truth be told, action should have been done immediately as soon as civilian targets were being bombed. But again, folks, the problem is there's something that AOC, Rashida Tlaib, Ayanna Presley, Elizabeth Warren should know all too well. Many of our democratic lawmakers, and yes, our Republican lawmakers too, are owned and sold by APAC and other pro-Israeli lobby groups. Hell, they're owned by a lot of lobby groups. Our politicians are paid to shut up. But see, the problem is, the problem is, Israel probably right now, girl boss too close to the sun. And their PR image is really messed up. See, it's not like how it used to be a few years ago. You know, where Israel would be doing this and then, oh, why is this happening? And then people move on. It's never been turned up like this. It's been turned up to an 11. And people can't turn away to this. And people cannot dismiss the horrific crimes that are taking place there. How many months are we in on this now? Seven, eight months now? Ongoing conflict, destruction of the people of Gaza. We cannot dismiss these claims that's happening there. We're seeing men, women, children starving, getting popped at, getting shot, getting killed, being burnt alive. This is insanity. So well done, Democratic lawmakers. It's good to see you speaking out, but are you going to be consistent? And yes, I'm even going to call out those uncommitted voters who wrote in uncommitted or Gaza. Okay, you did that. And for that, I say, well done. Job well done. However, 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 and this is important. <sighs> Are you going to be consistent in not supporting Biden? Are you going to be consistent in calling out all the Democratic lawmakers? And that's including the squad. And see, the thing is, while I could see the uncommitted voters being consistent, I don't see our lawmakers being consistent a lot of you went to bat for joe biden in 2020 and since then you've been part of that shield wall defending him he's not going to do anything to stop netanyahu netanyahu has given biden and his administration the middle finger netanyahu has given the middle finger to the un to the european union to other first uh, humanitarian aid groups he's given the middle finger to so many people so what's your red line what are you going to do how are you going to act? That has yet to be seen. But I'm not expecting much from our politicians except write nothing but words. Wonderful, wonderful words. Meanwhile, people are still dying. 